Hi, I'm Yolanda. I'm the owner and a dyer behind Sweet Kitty Yarns. Today I'm in my kitchen. I'm going to dye up some speckled yarn. I'm going to use a new gadget I got. You can peek over my shoulder. So, let's get started. So, the first thing you do is you go and pre-soak your yarn. This is just my sink with some citric acid and some warm water and my yarn that I'm going to dye. I put on some strings in a contrasting color so I really can easily move the yarn around uh, without having to search for those uh, ties that are already on there and are the same color. So I'm going to tie up the rest of the yarns and then we're going uh, to proceed with the next thing. So, how long are we going to soak the yarn? That really depends. If you got uh, wool with nylon, it doesn't take that long. Usually I just put it in the sink and they will submerge um, by themselves. And if they are, then they all uh, they have soaked up all the water uh, they can handle. And uh, well, that's be it then. If you got uh, yarn with silk in it, it might even take 24 hours. Because the silk really uh, rejects the water, I, uh, <coughs> I found out. So, uh, it may take half an hour, an hour, uh, maybe longer. I ha don't have any patience if I want to go dye, I want to start immediately. Usually I put the water in, um, put yarn in the water and then I'll go do shopping and then when I come back I'll start dyeing. So, um, I don't think there's really an, um, a set amount of time. If the yarn is really fully soaked, it does uh, absorb the dye more easily and um, more evenly. So that's something to consider. Uh, I've got some new yarn bases. The one I'm dyeing is um, these skeins are my old base, which is actually the same as my new base, but they use uh, probably a um, different kind of virgin wool, <coughs> because this one is, um, uh, I think, way softer. I really can try out how they knit up and how they hold up. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I found it a bit of an... Uh, Disappointment that these skeins are quite small in circumference. See, but I think they will fit in my um, dyeing pen more easily. But if you skein them up, they look like little fat skeins. They're less appetizing to watch than the long, slim ones, which you really can see the um, the color changes and the color repeats. But we'll see, we'll see, we'll figure it out. You can always rescan your yarns, of course, but that's a crap ton of work if you got a hundred uh, things you want to dye. So I'll just go with it like it is right now and see where it goes. Okay, what I did right now, I made a little tent for the dyeing. Because if you go and do speckling, it's going to fly everywhere. Your whole kitchen is going to be covered with little um, pigment particles. So you don't want that. Um, I've got two um, dyeing dishes and I put plastic around it. Clipped it with some clothespins up and down. And put a little bit of um, tissue, t tissue paper uh, on the bottom there. Because it's going to drip down here. It's gonna leak on my um, uh, countertop, which you don't like. If you are working on a gas stove, you probably won't do that because it might catch fire. Nobody wants that. Well, I tried to set up the camera so you can see what's happening here. I hope that works. And we're gonna have fun. Well, the next thing we're going to do is film. Um, the left pan with quite a bit of water because I want to do a tonal underground for uh, some of the skeins and um, that is color set and then use the other uh, pan for doing the speckling. Uh, 
So if you want to make a color, tonal color, you need to make sure there's enough water so the yarn can really swim and uh, absorb the fibers from all sides. So a tiny bit of water won't do. If you do speckling, you do want a tiny bit of water, just the steam actually, so the particles won't um, flow all over the place and just uh, stay uh, in place where you put them and um, stick to the yarn right away. So um, the yarn is soaked in citric, citric acid, but I always put a little extra in and it usually gets clumped, so I just take a clump and put it in the water. Add a little bit more. I don't uh, take uh, real hot water, but nice and warm, so it won't take ages for it to warm up. So I think that's kind of obvious. So I'm going to try it at this level, that might be good enough. We'll see how many skeins we do together, maybe one or two. And then I'll move them over to the other side if they're all set and then we can speckle the rest of it. Okay, it's time to put some dye into the dye bath and I think that's kind of a trade secret so everybody does it in their own way. I'm just going to put the dye in and well, I dissolved it first in this water so um, then it is a bit easier if you want to check how it might turn out you can take a little piece of tissue paper, put it in, and see if there's any color. Well, there isn't. Don't forget to put on your mask and some gloves. If I sound weird, that's because I've got a mask on. a little bit of disaster in my soaking bath because my uh, pot of dye just fell in there and it was open so some of the uh, yarn has already a bit of a color so sorry about that but well you gotta use it what we got it's pretty disastrous but stupid things happen see this already has a bit of color it doesn't matter because it's going to get more color now. I'm going to use the skeins that are contaminated. And because there was citric acid in the water, it already stained. And yeah, shit happens. Sorry about my language. Seriously, it hasn't happened before, but it must be a first time, right? You're just going to put your skeins in there and let them set. This one really cut badly, got a whole load, I think. Well, we work with what we got. Can't help anything and do anything about it now. So don't do as I do. Don't open your pot next to your soaking water. And tip it in there. Well, I'm just sorting out my skeins while you watch the yarn absorb all the lovely colors. I just want to start out with a very, very pale uh, undertone and add some lovely speckles onto that. 
this one is going to get some uh, extra colors. I already can see that the water is turning clear. So that goes pretty well. My even, and normally I won't put that many skeins in, be, but because my accident, it's better just to use up the skeins right away, I think. Stop worrying about it. If you're using non superwash yarn, you really have to be careful that the whole thing doesn't boil because you kind of felt it. I'm using the superwash stuff because that's just great for socks and that's the major thing uh, people I think use my yarn for maybe some baby sweaters that superwash is also kind of a must well this is looking good um, not all the yarn is submerged as you can see that just going to remove some and careful it's hot put it over to the other pot I will move the camera in a little bit so you can see exactly how the speckling will be going spike myself some ties something useful will be some thumbs was not even fully soaked yet. Well, that can continue. Oh, this is pretty pale. This one's okay, I think. Just in one here. Yeah. I think I'm going to choose to put on more dye in this bath and then we really can pack up that pan because that is necessary for speckling. You don't need too much room because the speckles will really spread out and you won't see any speckles no more. And that's kind of sad. it like this. It's all millions of ways things can happen. You can do stuff. It's nothing is good or bad or worse. Just depends on what you're looking for. You can really see here that there is already dye forming on the on the plastic and that will drip down. Okay, let that set for a while. So I'm going to show you my little gadget right now. It is called the Baker's Magic Wand. You can look it up, it's uh, on sale on Amazon. Uh, some um, big shops who sell cooking equipment, baking equipment and it looks like this you can turn the handle and then it will close up and you can sprinkle your dye on there I saw it on another dyeing tutorial so it's not my idea I can't take credit for that but I wanted to try it out and share it so you all can see if it's working or not. We already got one disaster. Might add another one today. You 
can see the water is almost clear. And that's good. That means all the dye has been absorbed. Now there's my little tie. See, it's easier to get the skeins out. That's probably one without because that's a different kind of yarn. I just wanted to uh, keep that as a separate skein to see how the dye behaves on a hundred of oh, no it's not hundred. Oh that's not that's not good. On a merino based yarn, see more disasters today. Gonna give that one a new side, just ripped it off. There's probably one more in place but on some new ties and then uh, we move the camera and start with the speckling. Well, put the, dye, the tie back on. Everything is nice and packed. We'll turn the camera for you so you can see that. See, it's very packed all in there. Well, that's just my... Let's put some water on there buttons and it doesn't like that. So let's heat up the other side now. And we can use some water from that pan. And why shouldn't we? Because there's always citric acid in there. Just make sure they don't need to be submerged. There needs to be enough water so it can go and steam and the yarn won't burn because that won't be good. That's very hot. And can you really see how packed they are? And normally if you want an even distribution of color you don't want to pack it. But now it's essential because otherwise the sprinkles will just make one solid color. That's not what we're looking for. So what I'm going to do here, out of screen, I'm going to take a tiny bit of powder I'm going to put that in my magic wand, my magic baker's wand. It's an awesome name. And a little goes really far. You don't overdo it. Let's see if I can show it. You can see it. I'm going to close up this thingy. And I already can see the bubbling there, so I'm going to turn, off the, turn down the heat. If you do want to steam, you don't need real boiling. So let's try it. Don't overdo it, because really, it is going to spread. It's already empty. Okay. Just talking to myself. You can always see the color there. That's a, um, a fuchsia color. I think I add a little bit more. Just trying this out. So the first time it's always... Okay, I think that's enough. I'm going to add more colors over here and here. Then let that really set. I'll turn everything over and try to do the other side. The darker the color, the less powder you need. You can also add a little bit of citric acid to um, Make it distribute maybe a bit better. This is a real dark color, blackberry. You don't think anything is coming out, but look at that. There definitely is stuff 
happening and this is so much fun it's going to be lovely and delicious I just keep it at uh, the same color range so uh, pilgos and paints and some very dark which looks like black it is actually a berry color so it won't be black is pretty dark just add a little bit more because it is all divided over I think six or seven skeins so the things that are visible will be way less than what you see here there is still stuff left over doesn't care I don't care it can mix with the other colors, colors, it will look pretty. So, we're gonna let this really steam. You can cover it with a lid or uh, some tin foil, anything you like. I'm just gonna leave it like this for, I think, 15 minutes. And then we're going to check if this worked or not. So as you can see this is steaming real nicely. I'm going to check right now if the dye is set uh, well enough. Then we can turn over the skeins and repeat the process. So follow some gloves. And as you can see already put in some skeins over there to create a new color, other pinkish. We won't waste any time then. So, let's see, you can carefully, well, it's still, it's not completely set. You can see that. So, we gotta wait for a little more, lo a little longer. And that's not a problem. Maybe you should cover it though. Set easier and it will uh, get more warm. So peel back. Okay, well it's well set now. Check this. Now we're going to turn over those skeins. You might want to put one or two beside the side because then it's it's a bit easier to turn the whole thing. I'm just going to look for the orange dyes. Very crazy. Wow, it already looks very pretty. Can you see that? Lovely. So, let's some build up heat there. So you want the speckled side, of course, to be on the bottom this time. So we can speckle the other side. Be careful, it is very good. So one without the tie. It's a pattern. It's a very nice merino. The new supplier really stated on the website that there was no animal, animal cruelty involved in harvesting the wool or whatever. They really took care of the environment while processing the yarn. So it's very ecological uh, friendly yarn, which is very important. The, uh, the older yarns I used was also uh, with no animal cruelty, of course. But this one really stated that there was a majority of German yarns and the other uh, fiber they uh, used was really uh, from only known sources and um, yeah, absolutely sure that it was all good and well which is important for the animals of course so Turn off the sound. 
because you do need please ventilate well use any means open windows doors whatever I just turned the ventilator on when you were all waiting for the yarn to set but I think the sound will really be disturbing for the, the video so turning it off again loading my magic wand with powder I'm gonna start the fun again I think, think this is a way to really make fine speckles minimize the really the contamination of the uh, whole kitchen because it's quite in a concentrated way this way it stays in all in one place that's really what I meant to say and don't fool yourself because you think well be careful nothing's gonna spread well it's gonna be everywhere if you wet this it's gonna be all colorful ridiculous if you have the opportunity to die outside that would be great because really if you can avoid doing this in your kitchen you might want to do this it's all non poisonous of course but this fine particles you don't want to inhale you don't want it on anything you use for your food or reuse don't reuse your stuff if it's only for yarn dyeing because you do want to be safe, better safe than sorry well I'm having fun I hope you like this uh, tutorial if you really reproduce this the yarn will, will look totally different so I'm not afraid of any competition on your part just fun no really this is just no secret you can do it try it Well, it definitely gonna take 30 minutes, even uh, more, for the dye really to set. If you do some speckling, it is quite um, not really unusual if it still keeps um, bleeding a little bit. If you put a paper towel on it and it's uh, a little bit of speckling is still uh, on there, then uh, that will go off with the washing. I'm gonna show you now a little bit of the wall. Hope you can see that that there is a lot of look at that you don't want to have that on your kitchen tiles yeah there's a lot of transfer I'll do a little close up for you to see those lovely speckles the next thing you're gonna do is turn off the heat and let the yarn cool down totally if you want to use the pan again then you can remove the yarn put it in the sink and let it cool down over there then we're gonna rinse the yarn and uh, put the clean water in with some really lovely eucalyptus soap or another soap wash and then we're gonna centrifuge it or just hang it out wet outside to dry so this yarn is cooling down right now I'm just going to show you a little trick if your dye pot is way too big and you just want to dye a few skeins then what you can do what you do is you push the thing over to just one side and then you can do the same speckling and it will have the same effect Okay, well this is not really a mystery or something special but so you know every step how I do it I'm just going to show you anyway if the yarn is still a bit warm try to adjust the temperature of the water to the yarn and it won't get shocked in any way um, the main use of rinsing the yarn is get rid of the citric acid some excess dye and stuff like that so I just put it on the bottom of the sink I just rinsed all these so it's not really a use of doing it again put the plug in arrange the skeins so they're not all tangled fill the sink with water very interesting stuff 
but yeah you can see the process exactly how I do it and maybe it's the first time you want to try it and it's nice to see how things are done and things aren't really complicated I used the eucalyptus, it's the rapture scent you can use any scent you like of course I just happen to like this one it is not cheap but you don't have to rinse your yarn and it is really um, user friendly you don't need a lot of it so I'm just going to pat it down a little bit so um, the soap will penetrate yarn um, you can let it sit for 10-15 minutes maybe maybe longer, longer is no, never a problem and then you don't have to rinse it just um, drain the excess water and hang it to dry so that's really, I wish you could smell it, it's amazing thank you as you can see there are still yarns boiling over there they're just small batches so I push the yarn aside this one will add really a lot and that just means that the yarn will get colored again on the other side, on the bottom side this will be a lovely yarn for men's socks I think because of uh, a bit more color this one I added a bit of yellow to brighten it up you see all the stuff, all the speckles, you don't want that in the kitchen okay well, I wanted to show you a little trick to see uh, if the yarn is set because I, that might be a problem for you to see and to know how it is um, controlled or seen. Well, it's easy, you take a paper towel, you put it on the yarn and this is not good, it's not set properly. If there's a little bit, that's not a problem because that will wash out the blue definitely not set you need lots of steam cover it up and take time be careful that uh, the water doesn't run out because your yarn will burn it almost happened just now because I got a phone call so as you can see the water is totally clear that means there's no excess dye the yarn will not bleed uh, when you wash it and that's also news so the yarn is drying right now, we got a very uh, big heat wave at the moment so it won't take that long. It can take up to 48 hours if you're in a very humid climate. Just take your time and let it dry naturally. So that was the tutorial for now, I hope you liked it. Uh, if you did, please uh, put up a thumbs up or maybe you want to subscribe. If the yarn is ready, I'll show it off in my podcast, which is Sweet Kitty Crafts on YouTube. If you want to take a look at my yarns, there is an Etsy shop, which is Sweet Kitty Yarn. It's not hard to find. Um, well, I really hope you enjoyed. Have a very nice uh, day and happy yarn dyeing. Bye!